This is day one of our weekend cattle call. We ran advertisements on the radio, TV, and we handed out flyers. Tim spearheaded the whole thing. He's done a great job. And we're expecting a lot of people. My buddy, he owns a copying store. So he gave me all the leftover paper to make all the flyers. I'm very resourceful. That's why the ladies like me. I went one full year without spending a dime on toiletries. You know, some of the best toiletries in the world, they're for free. How did I get all these people to come here? I put on the flyer that a major TV personality was going to show up. Who'd I get? No one. I lied. Well, this is it. The host for our fishing show may be standing in that line right now. Who's ready to be the next toast of our fishing show? Well, I quit my job two years ago to start this fishing show, and we're still working on the first episode. It hasn't been as easy as I thought, though. Um, money's been tight. I've been selling baseball cards at the local flea market, and I produce commercials for Mazapet Memorial, who is our one and only sponsor. Sure beats my old job, though, sitting in a cubicle for eight hours a day. Hey, guy, you see that game last night? Witty emails. Hey, see that Hassop video? Holiday parties. Judy's card is in the folder. You owe me 20 bucks. Meetings about meetings. Pack up your stuff, get your key, and get out of here. Yeah, I'm not missing that too much. On my last day there, we had a town hall meeting about what we wanted more, regular or vanilla coffee creamers. We voted 45 to 20 in favor of regular. Guess they just weren't ready for that type of change. Why haven't we produced a show in two years? Well, that's a good question. I'm not really sure why. I mean, we have a good crew. We've just been having some problems finding a host. What's up? Hi, how are you? Hey, my name's Chris. Hey Chris, how you doing? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Christopher S. Mosby. The S stands for sweet. Mother's Gladys P. Johnson. Father Nathaniel E. Lee Mosby. Born and bred Shenandoah, PA. Mom and dad both worked in the coal mines, you know. Legend has it, I was conceived four miles underground. What makes you think you're the next host for our fishing show? Easy. Two words. Marketing genius. Let me break it down for you. You guys need a host for the show. You need a face for the show. Who better than Chris Mosby? I hit all demographics. All right, keep going. You make me the host. The ladies will watch. For obvious reasons. The guys would be like, that Chris Mosby seems pretty cool, and he's wicked with the fishing pole. So they're on board, <laughs> you know. And I'm a great role model for kids. Junior, put down that crack pipe. Pick up a fishing pole. See, I hit all demographics. How would you relate to the minority audience? I also keep my eye on the prize. And for me, that's being the greatest fishing show host ever. I have an understanding with the minority audience. What about the Hispanic audience? Me llamo El Fishing. Te gusta es Chris Mosby. There you have it. It's easy. I also speak Yiddish. Yesterday, I caught a 10-pound gefilte fish. 
I like them. I got a question for you guys. What's the deal with the Mexican guy in the picture? That's Matt. He's our camera guy. Couldn't be here today. He had to work. But he's with us in spirit. Touche. One time I found 20 bucks in a men's size 10 shoe. It was all sweaty. I was gonna treat the guys to a round of beers, but the size 10 came in looking for his money. I had to give it to him. I'm honest, it's one of my weaknesses. I refer to people by their shoe size. I gave up on names a long time ago. US 10, European 44. So these shoes are too big. I've got a good eye. That's why Jimmy picked me to be the cameraman on the fishing show. Just one of the many perks of perfect 2020 vision. The other is I'm an expert at casting. I've been working here for three years now. It's okay. I find things to pass the time. You know, practice for the show. So I guess I lied to you before, we have produced a couple episodes. Our first five episodes were picked up by the BBC, the Blasky Broadcasting Corporation in Poland. So technically we are running in Poland. Hi, how are you? Good. What's your name? Luke. Luke what? Cool hand. What makes you think you're the next host for our fishing show? Well, I was basically born with a fishing rod in my hand. No, seriously, my mom uh, gave birth to me on a deep sea charter boat. I don't know about you guys, but I call it destiny. Could you explain to me the perfect day of fishing? Perfect day of fishing, I'd be me, my honey, out on the lake, you know, sipping back on some suds. What can you offer our show that other people can't? Well, I have a sixth sense. You know, you, you put me on that lake, I'll find that fish. Pretty much like Macaulay Calkin, you know, in, in the sixth sense. I like him. This, this is it. This is where the show comes alive. Episode four, our host at the time, caught a yellowfin tuna. 20, 20, 26 and a half pounds big. And he beat the heck out of it with this here club. Right gear. Found this beauty at a government auction. Apparently, black market restaurant was using it to kill dinner. You know how rare this is? It's like finding one of them German loogies. But the host had to get rid of them. Too violent. Buddha knife. Yeah, I know Blasky Broadcasting is busting on us. But it sure as heck beats my other job, working in the steel yard all day for six bucks an hour, breaking my back. That line of work, it ain't good for anybody. 
Rumor has it 1300s, slay dragons. Besides, there's more prestige in this TV show gig. I go to parties, I tell chicks. I'm the prop master on a TV show. I pick up one out of 30. More action than I got before I started this show. Antique fishing rod. After all, I'm the prop master for the show. I buy all the props. Auctions, flea markets, garage sales. I mean, look at all this stuff. Hi, I'm Frank Mazza with Mazza Pet Memorial. Have you lost a four-legged loved one? Well, I have too, and I want you to know that I'm here to help. My love for animals runs deep. That's why Mazza Pet Memorial offers the latest in dignified memorial for your fuzzy little loved one. From burial to taxidermy, we cover all types of pet memorials to ensure you and your pet's relationship lasts beyond the afterlife. Give us a call or check us out online and take it from Fluffy or Peaches. Mazza Pet Memorial is here for all your pet memorial needs. Cut. How was that take? Huh? How's the hair looking? That was good, Frank. Let's keep that take. Well, I'm the executive producer of the show. Jimmy, he used to work with me when he was in high school. The guys, they helped me out with my ad campaigns for Mazza Pet Memorial. Yeah, and I love helping out. I mean, this is great. Now, I know once we get a host, though, it's really going to pay off. And the guys, they've been good to me. And it's a great way to promote my business, Mazza Pet Memorial. Yeah, I used to work for Frank in high school. Um, <laughs> Frank, uh, Frank used to buy his beer when we were underage. He was that guy. Um, we'd keep him around just for that reason. Um, you know, the thing is, though, he'd want to stick around. After he'd buy us the beer, he'd want to stick around and drink with us. And... But he does do a hell of a De Niro impersonation. Look at this guy. Huh? You and me. You and me. We're going places. That we are. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, hold on, honey. Jimmy, I got a question about the script. Sure. What's up, Frank? Well, here's what I'm thinking. We do the same exact commercial, but with a Spanish accent. Why a Spanish accent? Well, here's how I look at it. The Latin community is 40% of my clients. And as we know, Latinos are very passionate about their pets. Yeah, but do you really think they're gonna like you doing a Spanish accent? Yes. All right, let's do a Spanish accent. Nice. Now hit me with that bronzer. Can you tell us about the biggest fish you ever caught? Well, the biggest fish I ever caught was a musky trout hybrid. I called it on opening day trout season. That's why I called it musky trout. I think that's pretty clever. Let me set the scene for you. I'm up at Beltsville. 2 a.m. in the morning. I'm naked. You know, well, there's no one up there. <laughs> and if there was, they'd be impressed. You know, up there on my boat, I'm casting, I'm casting. I see a school of piranha, you know, and they're going next to the boat, you know. So I tell the guy that's with me, I'm like, dive in there, attract them. So he dives in the water, you know. So he's getting eaten off by all these piranhas. So I grab him, and I'm naked now, like this, you know. I'm naked, you know, and I'm doing. And I grab him, and there's like 50 piranha attached to him. 50 piranhas, the greatest catch I ever had. Greatest day of my life. If you could take one person fishing with you, who would you take and why? It's pretty easy, you know. Chris Mosby, 10 years from now. You know, I have all the knowledge that future Chris Mosby had learned in 10 years, all the ladies. All the dudes that thought he was super cool, because he's Chris Mosby. And we'd be able to catch every fish known to man. Actually, I can think of two people, Storman Norman Schwarzkopf and Uncle Joey from Full House. First you got Norman, you know, with all the great war stories, and Joey, dude, he's a comic genius. 
So that's conversation all day, you know? All right, we're going to give you a pole and a rubber fish. What I want you to do is demonstrate to us what you do when you catch a fish. All right. Come on first. I always go, fish on! Usually I don't get stuck in trees like this. Am I releasing it or catching it? Catching it. Alright, um, try releasing it. Don't need to release it, it goes on its own. I'm Chris Mosby. I'm the sound man. I don't know crap about making a TV show, but Jimmy needed my help, so I'll help him. Qualifications? Music. I can name any song on the radio, anytime. I like fishing too, and I really dislike my current job. I work in a battery factory. I dip steel plates into acid baths all day. My typical day on the job, gloves, safety glasses, Walk over here to the acid bin, pick up the 50 pound steel plates, lugging them over here, dropping them in the acid tank. Walking back, picking more up, 50 pounds. Dragging them over here, dumping them in the acid tank. I do that for eight hours a day. Two 10 minute breaks, five days a week, every other Saturday. Sound man? Yeah, I'll help Jimmy. I'll be the sound man. Fishing is a competition. This is a contact sport. Yeah, baby! Woo! Yeah! Give me some bass. The way I look at it, woo! That fish is standing between me and my pride. And a possible paycheck. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. This is some serious Yeah, baby! Woo! Bunch eye! In your face! Yeah, my mom told me I was the best looking of the cousins, so I should get into acting. And uh, I love fishing, so when I saw the flyers for the fishing show, I said, let's give it a shot, you know. Okay, good, 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 Chris, real good. Here's the thing, when you catch the fish, you want to turn to the camera and tell the people at home about it. Okay? Okay, I got it, sure thing. Okay. If I had to choose between a woman and a fish, I'd probably go for the fish woman. You know, like, what's that called? Uh, a mermaid. I caught a fish. What the f cut, cut, cut. That was good, Chris. Real good, real good. See, the thing is, we're making a TV show here, and uh, when you catch a fish, you need to turn to the camera, tell the people at home a little something about it, make sure that they know what you just caught, okay? Okay. Are you sure? Okay. Okay. I've been working on some stuff in my studio. Once I get the official host job, I'm bringing the song and I've been working on. 
It's like a mix between Vanilla Ice and Eye of the Tiger. It's called Vanilla Tiger. Caught a fish. Brown, green. Why are we doing this? I guess we're all just looking for something. I mean, is that it? Am I supposed to work in my cubicle for the next 30 years of my life? Am I supposed to work in a battery factory or a freight yard, teach criminals? I mean, my grandfather fought in World War II, grandmother stitched soldiers up on the battlefield, and I work in a cubicle. Some people would say this is a gamble, but I think not trying would be a gamble. I could always go back to my office job, hope for a mid-level management position, have a nice thick 401k. Now we just need to find a host. <laughs>